Welcome to Bromley Town Church Online. We're so pleased that you have decided to join with us today. Pastor Jonathan is going to bring us a challenging and encouraging word later. And we are going to hear some more sofa stories from our church family. But first of all, we are all going to worship together now. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus and we are going to worship God who is good all the time.
perfect Savior upon that day. The greatest love, the punishment that should have fallen on us. Yes, Lord, we do praise you and we thank you for this salvation. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for coming to this earth, 
to those that you had created. Lord, we want to thank you that you did not seek equality with God as seen as something to be grasped, but that you came in the way of a servant, that you came to come and seek and save the lost. We praise you this morning that we have salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus. You are our King, you are our rock, you are our hope, you are our very great reward. You are the one who will come again, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we want to thank you for sending your Son. We want to thank you for making in Jesus the way for us to be reconciled to you. Lord, for sin to be defeated, for death to be defeated, and for us, Lord God, to enter back in to that relationship with you as our Heavenly Father through trust and faith in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. We honour you this morning. We praise you and thank you for all that you have done. In Jesus we praise. Amen. 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 Good morning. Well, we are bringing back prayer and praise reports as part of Bromley Town Church being live services again in Bromley. But uh, we just want to encourage you, if you're watching us online, if you're partaking of this service, that if there are prayer requests, if you have uh, things that you want to praise God for and to be let it to be known, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to to be part of uh, of your praising and we would also love to engage on your behalf in prayer. So if you have things that you want to thank God for, if you have prayer requests, let me encourage you to to contact the church through prayer at bromleytownchurch.com and those praise reports and those prayer requests will be received there and there will be people who will pray into those situations for you. That is uh, good news to see those coming back and we'll be introducing those, as I say, to our live services in Bromley so that all the praise, all the glory goes to our King. Right, I'm going to hand over now to Charlotte who is going to give us some notices. Hi Church, it's good to see you. As you know, from today we have Church Online but also Church Live in our building. We have been working really hard behind the scenes to put guidelines in place to stay safe and to stick to the social distancing rules. So from next week, in order to make room for more people, we will be going to two Sunday live services. That's right, you will be able to book tickets for either a 10 a.m. or an 11.30 service in our church building. Tickets will be available at 1 p.m. today and closing will be at Thursday at 9 p.m. So. You need to go straight on after this and reserve your seat for either of those services. Don't worry if you do miss out, we will still be having church online as normal. We love to connect with you during the week and one way you can do this is by joining in with our lunchtime Bible readings. This is with Pastor Jonathan from Tuesday to Friday at 12.30, just for half an hour and a great time to pray together, read and discuss If you want to find out more information, you can email the prayer email address. Also, we have just had a really successful online alpha course. So we are going to be holding another one in September. So you need to be thinking about who you can be inviting. This is the perfect chance for them to discuss all the questions that they have and for them to find out more about Jesus and Christianity. Now it's time for our offering. If you are able to give, please do so that we can reach more with the name of Jesus. You can give with any of these ways you see on screen now. Okay, let's pray. Thank you God for everything you have given us, whether it be big or small, it doesn't matter. You can use what little we have and multiply it for your glory. Lord, we just pray that we would see much fruit come from what we are going to give. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Great. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to seeing some of you in person next week. Now, here's a little update from BTC Kids and some sofa stories. Hello Foundation friends, it's Yinka here. I hope you would 
Join me today as we continue our current series, learning about God's family. So come over to the BTC Kids page and um, yeah, we're going to do some fun and exciting things. And I'll also share some updates with you and your parents. See you soon. Hello, BTC Kids. My name is Yomi. Right. I'm going to be talking about the most, most, most important person ever. Who do you think it is? The Queen? The Prime Minister? Maybe it's Spider-Man? Or me? Well, if you want to find out, come join me on the B2C Kids pages. See you there. Bye-bye. Hello church crew, what, what have I been up to during lockdown? Well, I've been mowing the lawn quite often, um, been running and I've been reading Billy Graham book. Um, also, I've been doing some plastic um, modelling kits. Now I'm back into work, I'm not doing that and I'm um, cycling into work, which is quite challenging um, on the legs, but fun and in the same way. Um, and yeah. I'll uh, look forward to seeing you all very soon. So I've been um, working from home, which took a little bit of getting used to at first, but um, I've really enjoyed not having to travel into London. To keep busy, I have been jogging and I recently completed the Couch to 5K. Um, I've been doing lots of gardening, I've been baking, um, trying new recipes, I started knitting, um, haven't got very far with that and I have got a guitar that I'm supposed to be learning to play but haven't found time for that yet so watch this space. Um, really looking forward to seeing you all uh, back at church someday soon. Until then, bye bye. Bye. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Bromley Town Church. This morning is great because we are online and we're also live at the church building. And in actual fact, if you didn't know, then as from well, today, but next week for you, you'll be able to come along to a live service. Uh, not as many seats as usual because we have got social distancing and we've made the church as safe as we can do. But next week, if you'd like to come to the church building for a live service, then please do book in. There's going to be two services next week, 10 o'clock and 11.30 a.m. And you can get all the information you need to book in on our website. So please go there if you'd like to come along to a live service. But if you're happy being at home and receiving this at home, then we really want to welcome you uh, back again next week to our service then. And it's good to know whether you're at home or whether you're in the church, one thing hasn't changed and that is the aim. Our aim is to help people get closer to God, whether they're online or whether they're in the church building. We want to help people get closer to God. Uh, the good news is God doesn't change. Locations may change, circumstances may change, but God doesn't change. He remains the same. In actual fact, his unchangeability is something that we love. Unchangeability is actually something that we like a lot. We like that with brands. You know, there's brands like McDonald's, the Big Mac. You go for a Big Mac because you know it's going to be the same, whichever McDonald's you go to. If you want a Starbucks latte, you go to any Starbucks, you should be expecting the same in any Starbucks. If you want to buy a Cadbury's cream egg in the shops, that's when they're available, of course. If you want to buy one of those, you expect the same product in each of the stores you go to. We love the idea of branding because branding is about getting the same product in, the same, in different places, but you as the customer always get the same satisfaction. And as far as we are as a church, whether you're online or whether you're in the church service, we want you to have the same uh, service. We want you to receive the same things from God. So we thank God that he remains unchangeable. He remains the same. Malachi 3 verse 16 says, I am the Lord and I do not change. And in Hebrews 13, 8, it says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. So wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we can be sure of this. God remains the same. And you know, that's very important for us because the fact that he remains the same means that he is consistent. The things that we've read about him in the past, the way that he has done his dealings with his people in the past, he is the same God and he can do those same things where we are today. The way that he loves people, and we read of that in the scriptures, and he cares for people, what he has done in the past, 
he will do again today. So the fact that God is unchangeable, that is really a strength for us and something that we want to take hold of and something that we can be, uh, we can be very grateful to God for because he's consistent. But today, today we're going to talk about a warning. We're going to talk about the warnings that Moses brings in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And the warning is really this. Be careful. Watch out. Don't forget about God. That's the warning that Moses brings. And you know, when the children of Israel had finally finished their time in the desert, they'd been wandering in the desert for 40 years, they hadn't been allowed into the promised land because of their own rebellion, and so they'd been wandering in the desert, now they'd come to the end of that time, and they were on the edge of the promised land. And Moses was sitting them down, he wants to give them instructions, because he can see, because he's been with these people, he knows these people, he knows that life is about to change quite dramatically for them. And so therefore he's trying to prepare them and get them ready for the change that they're about to go through. And he wants to bring to a, them a warning to them, to say, listen, you need to be careful. Because as you go through changes, different things can take hold of your mind, different circumstances can rise up, but I don't want you to lose your focus. You need to keep your attention, keep your focus upon God. And so we're going to look at this from Deuteronomy chapter 8, as I say. So today's subject, if you like, is this. Be careful, don't forget God. Be careful, don't forget God. And I'm going to look at this passage just under three quick headings, and they are these. God has helped us this far. Satisfaction can lead to pride. And thirdly, take time to remember. So first of all, our first point, God has helped us this far. Moses pointed out to the Israelites that God had led them for the last 40 years. He had been with them, he had protected them, he had provided for them, and he says to them, remember. Deuteronomy 8 verse 2, it says this, Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these last 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey his commands. The task of remembering is important. Remembering is when we deliberately look back and we bring back into our minds things, experiences uh, that we've experienced of the past. We bring them back to our memories and we recall the events. We go through those events. We consider the things that we learned through those situations when we bring that remembrance to us. And Moses says to them, remember how the Lord led you. Remember the situations you've already been through, the things that you have experienced, because those things give us the ability to reconsider what God has done and how good he has been. Remember how God has led you. Look back. Look back at particular days. Look back at the whole experience, because we can look back at particular times, particular events, and yet we can look back at the whole experience and we can say like, yes, I can see what God has been doing through this time. So Moses is saying to the children of Israel, look back at what God's leading, what he has done. Not only has he led you, he's tested you, he's guided you, he's helped you. He's tested you from the point of view that as you've gone along your journey, he has taken you through certain situations and experiences to help to remind you, to underline to you that God is in control and that he is watching over you. He says to them, remember that your shoes did not wear out. Remember that your feet did not swell up. Remember when you had no food, no water, and God was the one who provided. He was the one who gave you manna day by day to feed you. Remember those things. Hold on to those facts and remember that God has provided for you. And you know what? For us, we should remember that old chorus that says, count your blessings, name them one by one, uh, as, you will be, as it will surprise you what the Lord has done. And you know what, as we look back over our own lives and we remember the things that God has done for us, it's good for us to stop and to think, yes, I remember that. I remember how God provided. I remember how God moved in that situation. Because as time goes on, we can so easily forget. But we need to take stock ourselves of the blessings that God has given to us and has provided with us, not only day by day, but over a long period of time. We tend to take it for granted for our health, for our strength, 
the fact that we have family, the fact that we have friends. We forget about the fact that there's provision for us in finances, food, clothes, the fact that we've got homes to, to rest in, even the fact that we actually have sleep at night in our beds and we're in safety. It's so easily forgotten. It's, a, it's so easy for us to forget those things, but we shouldn't take any of them for granted because every one of them is a blessing. And you know, sometimes, just like the children of Israel, for us, there are tests and challenges that come along to help us to understand that we shouldn't take things for granted. You know, it's only when you perhaps get up during the night, you go to the loo or something, you come back to bed, you kick your toe, and suddenly you hurt your toe. It's only at that moment you actually take notice of the fact that there is a toe on your foot and how it helps you to keep balance. It's just suddenly when we hurt ourselves that we suddenly realise, wow, I've taken my own body for granted. We take for granted the fact that when we open the fridge door at home, there hopefully is food there for us. We are so blessed in what we have because we have an abundance. God has been good to us. And you know what? God tested the Israelites. In Exodus 15, we see one example of this. It says, after several days in the wilderness, their water supply began to run out. You can imagine the pressure that there was. They're not just, just on a walk. They're, they're away from any supplies and they've got to find water, not water anywhere, water in a desert place. And so the next day they start looking for water. And they spend all of that day looking for water, but they don't find it. And so, well, okay, that's day one. We, we know where we're going to look. We're going to go to, again tomorrow. So the next day they start looking for water and they don't find it. You can imagine the tension that's building up in the camp. We're running out of water. Water is a vital supply for us. We must find water. The third day they're looking, they don't find water, and then, oh, then they come upon, across this place called Mara, and they find water. And they get there to drink the water, but they find the water is bitter, it's poisonous, they can't drink it. And so they've got to stop. What are they going to do? You can imagine the cry that goes up before God. We're desperate. And you know what, when we get desperate is when we call upon God. Exodus 15 verse 25 says this, So Moses cried out to the Lord for help, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. Moses threw it into the water, and this made the water good to drink. Ah, oh, that's it. Problem solved. We've got drink, we're all okay, we move on. No, we should remember God has just stepped in and helped us. And he is the one who has provided for us, has cared for us, has guided us. We must remember those things. We need to be careful because we can forget about what God has done. Point one, God has helped us this far. Point two, satisfaction can lead to pride. Here, Moses begins to explain to the Israelites what can be the cause of them getting drawn away, the cause of them, uh, of them forgetting about God. And I'm going to read to you from Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 to 14. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land of flowing streams and pools of water, with fountains and springs that gush out in the valleys and hills. It is a land of wheat and barley, of grapevines, fig trees and pomegranates, of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and copper is abundant in the hills. When you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. But that is the time to be careful. Beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commands, regulations and decrees that I am giving you today. For when you have become full and prosperous and have built fine homes to live in, and when your flocks and herds have become very large, and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything else, be careful. Do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God, who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Wow! God has promised the Israelites that he's going to bring them into a land of abundance, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now we're reading that the very blessings, the very abundance that they're receiving can actually cause them to stumble. Verse 10 says, when you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord. 
I find that interesting because obviously we tend to have a practice of giving thanks for our food before we eat. There is a sense of us blessing the food to make sure it's all okay. And we say, thank you, Lord, for giving us this food to eat. But when we've eaten and we've enjoyed the meal, we just carry on. Whereas this, what Moses is saying is actually when you've finished your meal and you realise, wow, I've received this good food. Thank you, Lord, for the food that I have just had. In other words, he's telling us to take note of the blessing that we have just received. Moses is concerned to make sure that the Israelites, as they go into this place of abundance, that they're not just going to forget about everything, but they're going to remember how good God has been to them and how good he is still being to them. You see, the manna is soon going to stop because they are going to start eating the crops that they themselves have planted. And so Moses is saying that, well, when this happens, you need to make sure that you're still thanking God and you don't forget about him. Verse 12 says, when you have become full and prosperous, when your flocks and herds have become multiplied, when your silver and gold has become multiplied, be careful. And the same thing can say to us. We tend to get to a place where, okay, we start a job, we start earning some money, we can start to provide for ourselves, we've got food in the fridge at home, oh, we've got a bit of extra food, we can buy some other things. Our silver and our gold start to become more plentiful, become multiplied, and when that happens, there can be a tendency for us to forget about God. You can sense the concern that Moses is having. He has been looking after this people, he's been caring for them, but now as he's releasing them into this new dimension of life, this change of life, he's concerned that the abundance that God is going to bring to them is going to cause them to turn away. In effect, he's saying, make sure the blessings that you have received turn you to praise, not turn you to pride. You see, it's so easy for us to say, well, look what I have achieved, look what I have accomplished, rather than us saying, thank you, Lord, for what you have given to me. Look what the Lord has done. And Moses could sense for the Israelites that they were going to be caught up in this very challenge. It seems strange, doesn't it, that the very blessings that God gives, they can actually take us to a place of pride where we're thinking about how well we have done rather than us realising how good God has been to us. Every one of us needs to take note of this warning. Because I think we're all aware in our own circumstances how easy it is for us to take the goodness of God that we have received so much for granted. We don't want to be in a place where we start saying, look what I have done, rather than saying, thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have given to me. God has helped us this far. Satisfaction can lead to pride. And thirdly, take time to remember. Now, I know we spoke in point one about us remembering, but here specifically, Moses brings the Israelites back to that point. Deuteronomy 8, verses 15 to 18, where he says to them, Remember that God led you through the vast and terrifying wilderness with its venomous snakes and scorpions, a thirsty and waterless land. He brought you water from the rock of Flint. He fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers had not known in order to humble you and test you, so that in the end he might cause you to prosper. You might say in your heart, the power and strength of my hands have made this wealth for me, but remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to gain wealth in order to confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers even this day. Moses is reminding the Israelites Remember, remember back to those times. There were times when you had run out of water, you were desperate for water, God provided water from a rock. Remember the times when you had run out of food, there was nothing that you could do, you were completely at an end of yourselves, God provided by sending manna for you on a daily basis, so that you had always had enough to eat. God takes us and can test us to bring us to a place where we are humbled of ourselves and we realise, wow, I actually can't do this. And that is a humbling experience. None of us particularly like being in that place where we feel out of control, where we feel, I can't do it. We much prefer it when we feel like we're able. But you see, sometimes God has to bring us to a place where we realise, you know what, I can't do this. 
Without God, I can't get through. Because in those times, God can show, hey, I've been helping you all along, but now I'm just underlining to you just how much help I give you on a daily basis. And now I've brought you to a place where there's impossibility for you. So you are completely humbled. I can do nothing. God, I need you. And at that point, God can step in and bless yet again. But it only does it so that we can come to a point of saying, wow, I need to remember that every good and perfect gift comes from heaven above. And that is exactly the point that we want to make. When we're going through all the changes that we're going through at the moment, the adjustments of life, trying to get back to some sort of normality, but what is normality? The fact that now life is not as quiet as it used to be. We were actually in a more reflective time. Now the pace of life is speeding up. We're getting back on, hey, we're just getting back to our normal. It's so easy for us that we can actually begin to forget God. But we need to take the warning that Moses brought to the Israelites firmly to our hearts. And to remember, actually, God provides us with everything that we need on a, daily bless, on a daily basis. And our job is not to take presumption, but to give praise. Our job is to bring thanksgiving to him and to cause us to remember, Lord, I will remember your goodness, how you have helped me, how you have blessed me. And I will give thanks to you on a daily basis for what you have done. Let's remember to try to give thanks, not just for the fact that we have food, but let's remember to give thanks at the end of a meal to say, thank you, Lord, for the provision that you have given me. Thank you that I feel full. Thank you that I've had the blessing of what you've given to me. Let's remember to be thankful and to receive from God all of the bounty that he wants to pour out upon our lives. I trust that you have a, a blessed week. And of course, if you want to come to our live service, that you remember to book in because I think booking is going to be open from uh, one o'clock today. So hopefully we'll see you soon, if not in person, online next week. God bless you. Bye bye.
shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you Thank you, Pastor Jonathan, for the reminder not to forget the goodness and the mercy of God in our lives. And then coupled with just the reckless love of God, let's just even just thank God for a moment. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We ask for grace, God, to remember you in the depths of our hearts, God, that we would remind our hearts that you are good and you know the future and you have a plan for us. You have something we can hold on to, God, and you are even preparing a place beyond this world for us. God, we remind our souls of who you are and how good you've been to us, that you rescued us from the pit of darkness, God, and you brought us into the kingdom of the Son of your love. God, we thank you this day. God, give us hearts, God, that are close to you. Give us hearts, God, that are just knit together, God, that remind ourselves of who you are and what you've done. God, we bless you this day. Your people bless you, and we praise your great and mighty name, that you are for us and not against us. We will remind our souls yet again and again of your goodness, God. We thank you. We thank you again and again. In Jesus' name, thank you for being with us again. We are glad that you can make it here. Please remember that Sunday services are happening live for those who can join us. You need to pre-book, um, and that can all be done on the website. Uh, also on the website are kids' lessons. Now, today's lesson is regarding uh, respecting God, that God is our big VIP. But over the summer, we are having a special unit called Proverbs Super Friends. And it's delving into how we can be good friends. Kids can invite other friends. We'll have Zoom calls during the week. We'll have activities done by some of the teachers just for fun. Uh, there'll even be a special goodie bag uh, for all the crafts and activities that will be done during the Zoom calls over the summer, for the six weeks of summer, with super friends. So join us. Look up online for all the details coming up but just some summer fun for all the kids to keep learning and remembering our God. Well, bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he hold you in the palm of his hand and until we meet again, God bless you. <laughs>